Good morning and welcome to worship with the congregation of the Presbyterian Church at Peace Chapel. We are glad you can be here with us, whether you're here in the chapel or out in Zoom world. And um, Pastor James is getting, after being away for a couple weeks and having the audio system changed three or four times while he was away for two weeks, I'm getting used to the audio system again. So I'm glad I can be here with you and I'm glad you can all be here wherever you are. If you are out in Zoom world, you're seeing the bulletin on your screen and it will scroll right on through worship so you can follow along. We invite you to read aloud the portions in bold print and to sing along with the songs. Um, we also invite you when we get to the offertory time and you can't come up to the plate with your offering, we invite you to make use of the Vanco, V-A-N-C-O, Vanco Mobile Faith Engagement app. If you put Vanco Mobile Faith Engagement into your computer's browser or your phone's app store, it will take you to a free download from the Presbyterian Church. And you can download that and then enter Presbyterian Church at Peace Chapel, and it will help you give electronically so that you can be part of the discipline of giving back to God. If you'd like to be a little more old school, you can always write a check and put it in an envelope and mail it to 1212 Livingston Avenue in North Brunswick, 08902. Um, as we continue to adjust to um, the, the new audio realities, um, I'm going to experiment today with so that because you know, you all, you all hear, hear more than enough of my voice during worship. Um, I'm going to experiment with actually muting myself during the, during the singing. So when I do that, I have to remember that I have to unmute myself. So if you hear a loud, a loud noise from um, the piano or you see Chris throw a hymnal at my head, it's because I haven't unmuted myself. Um, but we will do the best we can. Children are encouraged to have paper and pencils or crayons handy to draw during the sermon, and we'll talk about that more right before the scripture lesson. And I think that's everything we need to know to get us started, so I'm going to ask Chris to play through our gathering song, and we will sing through it a few times, and probably the second time or so, I'll invite everybody here in the chapel to stand. Let us worship God. Our help is in the name of God, who made heaven and earth. God, rescue us from enemies and troublemakers. Make our children strong and bright. Give us all that we need and protect us from invasion, exile, and crime. Chris is going to play through our psalm, and then we'll all sing.
Beloved in Christ, I greet you with God's great words, grace and peace. Glory to God forever. Amen. Please be seated for prayer. And now let us confess our sins and leave our burdens at God's feet so that we may go forth free and forgiven, living out the promise of our baptism. Let us do all this beginning with the prayer you find on your screens and in your leaflets. Let us pray. O God, we lift up our eyes and look at our lives and we see so much that has gone wrong. We confess that we often shy away from doing justice. Lord, have mercy. We confess that we often neglect to love kindness. We confess that we often forget to walk humbly with you. As we rise to the light of a new day, as we greet one another again, as we break the fast of the night, listen to these words that we may trust from 1 Timothy. Here's a word you can take to heart and depend on. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Believe this good news and live in peace. As we seek to live lives of peace, we hear these words from the Apostle Paul. Be in harmony with one another and live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Beloved in Christ, the peace of Christ be always with you. Let us greet one another with the hand of fellowship and the peace of Christ.
Danya se danya se danya me ase Danya se danya se danya me ase If you say oh yeah nana do e do e so Danya se danya se now we come to the part of worship where we visit with the young children before Bible stories and sermons and all of that stuff. And if you are out in Zoom world and you're a young child or you're just young at heart, you're welcome to sit in on this. And if you want to be out in Zoom world and drawing on paper during the sermon, that's also okay. Hi, guys. Do you know that names mean things? No. no. Did you know that names mean things? Did you know that Yasmin means gift of God flower? You're a flower of a gift of God. Wait, hold up. Yeah. I believe our pop told us that um, Yasmin's name meant a flower. And yeah. Ethan's, and then but it's even, it's even more than just a, it's, it's from a flower, but it also means gift, the flower's name means gift of God. So it's gift of God flower. It's pretty cool. And Eli, your name means reaching higher ground. And Ethan, your name means strong and enduring. And my name, James, started out in Hebrew as Jacob. And so it means somebody who has control over his own will or the person who steals first place from somebody else. So mine's not such a good name. But this stuff about names is important because of today's Bible story. In today's Bible story, we have a prophet named Elisha. And Elisha means God save. God lives. I'm sorry. God lives. So... His name means God lives. And as we go through the story, now there's a famous story about Elisha when he was with his teacher Elijah, and he said, as God lives, I won't leave you, when Elisha was getting ready to go up into heaven. And Elisha stayed with him till the last minute because of that. Well, in today's story, there's a woman who's going to do some kind things for Elisha. And you're going to hear about that. And so he's going to do some kind things for her. And then there's going to be a problem. And when the problem comes, she's going to say to him, as God lives, I'm not going to leave you. Which is, of course, just what he said to Elijah. And it reminds him of how important it is sometimes to go ahead and do hard things in person and not just send somebody. So I'd like you to listen to this story because Elijah's going to send somebody to do something or Elisha is going to send somebody to do something, but he, and he's going to do something nice, and she's going to do something nice, and then he's going to do some things himself and really, really put some effort into it. And then everything changes because he starts being nicer to everybody. You're going to hear about a group called the Company of the Prophets. There were lots of prophets in Israel when Elisha was a prophet, some of them were really important ones, like Elijah, his teacher, and himself, Elisha, and later Isaiah and Jeremiah. And some of them, we never found out their names. They're just always the company of the prophets. They're like in the minor leagues. And Elisha and Elijah and Isaiah and all of those were the major league prophets. So you're going to hear about them a little bit. Most of all, I'd like you to listen for what happens when one person is nice to another person for no other reason and all the things that can come from that, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, before we have Bible stories in church, we always say a prayer, and at the end of the prayer, what do we say, Yasmin? We say amen. So I want you guys to say amen really loud. The grown-ups are going to help with the prayer, okay? Let's pray. Spirit of wisdom and revelation, come stir up our hearts and minds. Word incarnate among us, creator who called all things to be,
glorious triune God, illumine us now. And we all say, One day, Elisha was passing through Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived, who talked him into stopping off for a meal. And then it became his custom. Whenever he passed through, he stopped by for a meal. She said to her husband, look, I am sure that this man who regularly passes our way is a holy man of God. Why don't we add on a small room upstairs and furnish it with a bed and a desk, a chair and a lamp, so that when he comes by, he can stay with us. One day, when he came there, he went up to the room and lay down for a nap. Then he said to his servant Gehazi, tell the Shunamite, Shun, Shunamite woman, excuse me, that I want to see her. Gehazi called her and she came to him. Elisha then said to Gehazi, say to her, look, you've gone to all this trouble for us. What can I do for you? Is there anything I can say on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She said, I'm content to live at home with my own people. Elisha conferred with Gehazi. There's got to be something we can do for her. But what? Gehazi said, well, she has no son, and her husband is an old man. Elisha said, call her. So Gehazi called her, and she stood at the door. Elisha said, about this time next year, you will be holding a son in your arms. But she said, no, man of God. Sir, don't lie to your servant. But the woman conceived and gave birth to a son and at about the same time the next year. This was what Elisha had promised her. The child grew up. One day he ran to his father, who was with the reapers. He complained to his father, oh, my head, my head. His father said to his servant, carry him to his mother. The servant took him in, her, in his arms and carried him to his mother. He lay on her lap until noon and died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, closed the door on him and left. Then she called her husband and said, send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys so that I may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. Her husband said, why are you going to him today? It's not a new moon or a Sabbath. She said, don't ask questions. I need to go right now. Trust me. She saddled the donkey, then said to her young servant, drive the donkey hard. Don't let me slow down unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi, his servant, look, there is the Shunammite woman. Ran, run at once to meet her and say to her, are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is the child all right? She answered, Gehazi, things are okay. But when she reached the holy man on the, at the mountain, she threw herself at his feet and held tightly to him. Gehazi came to pull her away, but the man of God said, leave her alone. Can't you see she's in distress? But God hasn't let me in on why. She said, did I ask you for a son, sir? Didn't I say don't raise my hopes? He ordered Gehazi, don't lose a minute. Grab my staff and run as fast as you can. If you meet anybody, don't even take time to greet him. And if anyone greets you, don't even answer. Lay my staff across the boy's face. But the boy's mother said, as God lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave without you. So Elisha got up and followed her. Gehazi arrived first and laid the staff across the boy's face, but there was no sound. 
no sign of life. So he went back to meet Elisha and told him the boy didn't wake up. When Elisha came into the house, he saw the child lying on his bed. So he went in and closed the door on the two of them and prayed to God. He got up on the bed and laid down on top of the child, putting his mouth on the boy's mouth, his eyes on the boy's eyes, his hands on the boy's hands. While he was stretched out over him like that, the boy's body became warm. Elisha got up and paced back and forth in the room. Then he went back and stretched himself upon the boy again. The boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elisha called Gehazi and said, get the Shunammite woman in here. He called her and she came in. He said, take your son. She came and fell at his feet, bowing to the ground, and then she took her son and left. When Elisha returned to Gilgal, there was a famine in the land. As the company of prophets was sitting before him, he said to his servant, put a large pot on and make some stew for the company of the prophets. One of them went out into the field to gather herbs. He found a wild vine and gathered it from it, a lap full of wild gourds, and came and cut them up into the pot of stew, even though no one knew what kind of a plant it was. The stew was served to the men, but as they started to eat it, they cried out and said, there is death in that pot, man of God. They couldn't eat it. Elisha said, get some flour. He threw the flour into the pot and said, serve the people so they can eat. At that point, there was nothing bad left in the pot. One day, a man arrived from Baal Shalisha. Baal Shalisha. He brought the man of God 20 loaves of fresh baked bread from the, from the early harvest, along with a few apples from the orchard. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. His servant said, how can I feed 100 men with this? Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. God says there's plenty. And sure enough, there was. He passed around what he had. They not only ate, but had leftovers. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. All she wanted was to be nice to this man who walked, this holy man who walked past her house every so often. She could have stopped with pleasantly waving as he walked by. She'd be being nice to him. Or she could have shown customary hospitality for her time by serving him just one lunch of just one dish. But she went out of her way, feeding him again and again and again, giving him a place to stop on his journeys for no reason but kindness. She'd be a good Christian, but nobody was going to be a good Christian for another 900 years, so she couldn't be. Elisha was grateful, even if he assumed, like a childless man might do, that she must really want a child. But she loved her son when she got him. Even if she never imagined wanting a son, she loved her son, and she couldn't bear to lose him. And the whole story turns when she said to Elisha what he said to his mentor long ago. As God lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave. Elisha was losing the most important person in his world when he said that. Elisha was opening himself up for a life-giving miracle when he said that. Elisha's own name was wrapped up in all of that. Those words which Elisha used to receive grace now inspired him to give grace. He went with the woman who had been so generous to him. 
He didn't just say something or said, send someone. He went with her. He put his own flesh and breath and sweat into the process of helping this boy. And the result was life. And the result was generosity later toward the company of the prophets. Generosity that he'd never shown before. Gr granting life to them, or at least fixing the mess in the stew. And the result was God's abundance on display with those loaves and apples. All because she, that woman, wanted to do something nice. When we look out for one another, we release God's grace, God's abundance, God's new life. The smallest, simplest, simplest act of kindness can lead to another, and then to another, and then to another, and then to new life and renewed life and God's abundance. The jars and cans and packages of food we bring, the camp scholarships and the aid packages, the times we look in on neighbors and share grace with friends, all let God's love into our world. And so, in a world where lately hate and hopelessness seem so very strong, we must be more kind. We must share and welcome and live like prophets, always calling people to justice and repentance and the reign of God, building bigger tables, not higher walls. This is our job, not just with what we can easily spare, but as Elisha learned, with every bit of strength and effort we have. Elisha's name, as I told the children, means God lives. And people would see that this was true wherever he went. May people see that wherever we are. May they see that God lives as we bring God's life and love to the last and the least. Let us pray. Write these words in our hearts, dear God, and help them to grow up in us the fruits of your spirit, to the honor and praise of your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Chris is going to play through the hymn, and then we'll all sing. by love, inviting God's world to the glorious feast. We work and we pray through sorrow and joy, extending God's love to the last and the least. We seek to become a beacon of hope, a lamp for the heart and a light for the feet. We learn year by year to let love shine through until we see Christ in the person we meet. We welcome the scarred, the wealthy, the poor, the busy, the lonely, and all who need care. We offer our home to those who 
will come, our hands quick to help, our hearts ready to dare. Together by grace we witness and work, remembering Jesus in whom we grow strong. Together we serve in spirit and truth, remembering love is the strength of our song. Please be seated. Again, I welcome everybody to worship this morning. I'm glad you can all be here with us, whether you're out in Zoom world or here in the chapel. And um, so it's, we're coming to our time when we share joys and concerns before we share our offerings and then share together in prayer. And as we get ready to do that, I invite folks who are out in Zoom world who have joys or concerns to share to go ahead and unmute. Um, and I invite, um, so yeah, go ahead and unmute. And if you're um, on a phone, a regular phone, you do that by pressing star six. Everybody else look for the little microphone at the bottom of your screen and click on it. And while you're doing that, I'm going to just share a few announcements. Next Sunday, we're back here for worship and we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper because it's the beginning of August. And um, so everyone is welcome to be here. If you're out in Zoom, going to be out in Zoom world, please remember to have some bread or a cracker big enough to break and enough to share with however many are at your screen, along with some juice or wine, so that you can dip your bread and partake in the Lord's Supper with us. And then we'll have worship again on the 11th and the 18th and the 25th and take us right through August. Today is our last day for collecting peanut butter for, um, for the food ministry we do with the Bayard Street Presbyterian Church. But um, if you are realizing that you left your peanut butter at home and it's neatly sitting on your kitchen counter, you can still bring it next week. People will still be eating peanut butter in August, so it will be okay. Um, but next week we will start collecting corn especially, and any other, not, so canned corn and any other non-perishable foods that you have, we are, are welcome for the sharing. How, how did things go yesterday? We had a few jars of peanut butter left, so we're ready to go through this coming week. Okay, so this is good. By a lot of people. A lot of people. And basically, all food was given out. And all the food was given out, but just a few extra jars of peanut butter, so that's good. Keep bringing stuff in, folks, because there's always more people to feed, it seems like. Okay, do, is there anybody we need to remember, especially in our prayers this week? Helen, hang on, wait for the microphone. Oh, uh, to keep Mimi and her grandchildren in prayer, uh, Mimi came down with pneumonia this past week, so... She's not doing very well at all. And remembering Israel and all of the yes. issues that surround that country. Israel and Gaza. Lebanon. And Lebanon. Anybody else? Yes, go ahead. I pray for my sister Doris. No, no. She okay. passed away last week. Okay, so for all of your family at the loss of your sister. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody? Uh, yes, Lawrence. Um, continued prayer for our congregation and also for those that are not here today for their newness. Um, those that are shouting, that are shouting and um, continued prayers for our country as we move through this uh, campaign season that we have peace. And also um, uh, prayers for Lily, she's not here, for her upcoming birthday. I think Helen put out an email for people to sign cards uh, uh, yes. for Lily. And as for continued prayers for my family, for Bansi, for Yasmin, Ila, and Itana here, 
but also for for us, uh, we're traveling uh, this coming weekend to, to meet, uh, to see Lawrence, my son, in Dallas. We haven't seen him since he moved, so traveling uh, since uh, we'll be back on Tuesday. Okay. So safe travels with that. Yes, Helen has brought in cards, uh, birthday cards, so everybody find a birthday card to sign so that we can send those off to um, Lillian. Her birthday is actually next Monday. Next Monday. But they're going to, so Monday a week, but they're going to celebrate on Saturday. And um, don't worry, we will do something here when Lillian gets back. I'm not going to say any more because Lillian might have gotten, might be on the Zoom. So she might be able to hear me. You should come anyway, Lillian. Okay. Um, anybody else? Anybody out in Zoom world? Any joys and concerns? Um, also prayers for peace during the Olympics. Um, there's already been, there was already uh, some trouble in Paris right before the Olympics began, but um, let's hope that they can get through and have a reasonably quiet week. Okay, and let's hear these words from Paul's letter to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And so let us now with gladness present our tithes and our offerings from our life and from our labor unto our God. After we say the Sursum Corda, um, we will sing the first stanza of the hymn you see in the bullet in the leaflet or you'll see on the screen. And then we will have a bit of prayer and then Chris will play and we will sing the second stanza. And then we'll have a bit of prayer and then Chris will play and we'll sing the third stanza. And then we'll have a bit of prayer and the Lord's Prayer and then the last two stanzas and I'll invite you to stand for those when they come just so you know what's going on. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Oh God, nope. 
we, we wait. You, you saw the note I left you? Okay, cool. Let's pray. Oh God, whose very essence is self-giving love, we come to you, gathered by your Son from all times and places and walks of life, from all races and backgrounds, from all sorts of understandings of you and of one another and our world. We come to you and we are washed in your self-giving love, and we are called to love one another with no limits or conditions. And so we pray for your world and for all the people in it, especially for those in places of conflict or danger this day, people of Ukraine and soldiers of Russia, people of Israel and Gaza and Lebanon, people in our own country in tense and anxious times, people at the Olympics, people who are traveling, and people who are refugees, traveling not because of their own will, but because of disaster and violence and war that have left them with no home, searching desperately for another. We pray for those women and men who lay down their lives for the safety of brothers and sisters and neighbors, wherever they might be. And we pray for those who lead us, for our president and representatives, our governor and legislators, people who administer the affairs of our nation, our state, our cities and towns, and those who administer nations and states and cities and towns all around this world, that whether they profess your name or not, they might lead us into your truth, your freedom, your peace. Let the love in our minds and hearts be like your love for us, growing from you. Before our Father's throne, we pour our ardent prayers. Our fears, our hopes, our aims, our one, our comforts and our cares. We come to you, O God, giving thanks for many blessings of your love that we see around us today. For life and health, for pleasant weather today, for the ability to get together, the ability to not get together if we wish not to, the ability to worship and learn and grow. And we come praying for those in special need of love, for those who feel unloved because they are homeless or hopeless, imprisoned or abandoned, without resources or without loved ones nearby, for those who struggle with illness or infirmity, with loss or life change. We pray especially for Mimi and her grandchildren, for Bassie, Yasmin, Cornelia, and Lawrence, for people who are shut in today, for Lillian as she celebrates a milestone in her life, for those who mourn, especially for the family of Doris. We pray for all those whose names we remember in our hearts and those whose names we don't know yet. Let us live out your self-giving love in every life we touch.
we share each other's woes, each other's burdens bear, and often for each other flows a sympathizing tear. We come to you, O God, as your people, praying to be better vessels of your love, more welcoming and accepting, more brave and articulate, more willing to risk and to share as Christ risked and shared with each one of us. We pray for your holy church, for this congregation gathered here, for our sisters and brothers in and around North and New Brunswick, for the churches of the Presbytery of the Coastlands and the Presbyterian Church USA, her colleges, seminaries, missions, and ministries, for the staff and the campers at Camp Johnsonburg and other camps this week, for everyone who proclaims your good news wherever they might be. Let our bodies, minds, and spirits be ever tuned to your love, ever alive with your grace, ever sharing by the power of your spirit in the good, the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. One glorious hope revives our courage by the way, while each in expectation lives and longs to see the day. When from all toil and pain and sin we shall be free, and perfect love and friendship reign through all eternity. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are God's own people in order that together we may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who calls us out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all this day and always. And may all God's people say together, Amen.